हे गायज वेलकम बैक टू द चैनल होप यू गायज आर डूइंग गुड इन दिस वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस द अनाटमी ऑफ द फ्रंटल बोन सो विदाउट वेस्टिंग एनी मोर टाइम लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड द फ्रंटल बोन इज एन अनपेड शेल शेप्ड बोन दैट फॉर्म्स द एंटेरो सुपीरियर एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द क्रेनियम दिस इज द सैजिटल क्रॉस सेक्शन एंड द सुपीरियर व्यू ऑफ द बेस ऑफ स्कल एंड दिस बोन शेडेड इन द लाइट ब्लू इज द फ्रंटल बोन As you can see it forms the anterior superior aspect of the cranium. The frontal bone can be divided into four parts which include the squamous part, two orbital parts and the nasal part. We will discuss each of these parts separately and see what all anatomical features they possess. Starting with the squamous part. So the squamous part has convex external surface and concave internal surface. Features of the external surface include the external surface of the squamous part is marked by two frontal tubers or tuberosity or eminence. The inferior border of the squamous part is called the supraorbital margin. This area contains the supraorbital foramen where the supraorbital vessels and nerves pass through. The superciliary arc lies just above the supraorbital border. The glabella lies between the two superciliary arcs. And lastly, the lateral end of the supraorbital border forms the zygomatic process that articulates with the zygomatic bone. Features of the internal surface include the groove for the superior sagittal sinus passes vertically on the midline of the internal surface. Inferiorly, this groove turns into the frontal crest. Near the lower end of the frontal crest lies the foramen cecum. Let's have a look. This is the anterior view of the external surface of the squamous part. These two areas encircled are the two frontal tuberosities marked on the squamous part. This margin which you can see is the supraorbital margin. And as we discussed earlier that this margin contains the supraorbital foramen for the nerves and vessels. Just above this supraorbital margin lies these two superciliary arcs. We discussed that between these arcs lies the glabella. Here we said that the lateral end of the supraorbital border forms the zygomatic process that articulates with the zygomatic bone. So this is the zygomatic process. This is the zygomatic bone. And this is the zygomatic process of the frontal bone. This is how it articulates with the zygomatic bone. These were the features of the external surface. Now let's look at the features of the internal surface. So this is the anterior view of the internal surface of the squamous part. This area marked in red is the groove for the superior sagittal sinus that passes vertically on the midline of the surface. We discussed here that inferiorly this groove turns into the frontal crest. So this is the frontal crest. Lastly near the lower end of this frontal crest lies the foramen cecum. So this foramen which you can see is the foramen cecum. With this we complete the first part of the frontal bone and move on to the next part which is the orbital part. The orbital part contains two orbital plates. They are separated by the ethmoidal notch which is filled by the ethmoid bone. The concave inferior surface is called as the orbital surface. It forms the superior orbital wall. The orbital surface has the lacrimal fossa which lies near the zygomatic process. and the trochlear fovea and the spine which lies near the frontal notch the superior surface faces the cranial cavity this surface has the impressions of cerebral gyri and lastly the posterior border articulates with the sphenoid bone let's have a look this is the inferior view of the bone these two parts encircled are the orbital parts which contain the orbital plates As we discussed earlier that these plates are separated by the ethmoidal notch. So this is the ethmoidal notch between the two orbital plates. This concave inferior surface is called as the orbital surface. We discussed here that this orbital surface has the lacrimal fossa which lies near the zygomatic process. So this is the zygomatic process and here the lacrimal fossa is present. Another finding was the trochlear fovea and the spine. So this is the trochlear spine and here you can see the trochlear fovea. 
This is the posterior border which attaches with the sphenoid bone. With this we complete the orbital part and move on to the last part of the frontal bone that is the nasal part. The nasal part surrounds the ethmoidal notch. The nasal spine lies anteriorly and it is directed downwards. On the left and on the right of the nasal spine there is opening of the frontal sinus. This opening leads into the frontal sinus. And the frontal sinus contains air and is separated by the septum of frontal sinuses. Let's have a look. Again we have the inferior view of the bone. The part outlined in black is the nasal part. And you can see that it surrounds the ethmoidal notch. Here the nasal spine is present. For a better understanding let's look from the anterior view. So this green shaded part is the nasal spine which lies anteriorly and is directed downwards. This hole which you can see is the opening of the frontal sinus which lead into the frontal sinus. This is the coronal cut section of the skull. These two sinuses which you can see are the frontal sinuses and they are divided by this septum of frontal sinus. With this we complete the anatomy of the frontal bone. So that is it for this video guys don't forget to subscribe the channel and follow us on Instagram. Links in the description.